Hello and welcome to my tutorial on using some pretty cool websites to do some pretty cool things. One of the problems with doing hybrid is the annoying part of putting all of your quizzes and tests into Schoology, having to type the questions, the answers, etc, etc, etc. If you already have a quiz made from the past, like a written quiz, like what I have up on my screen here, there are websites that can convert this into a Blackboard file, which then can be imported into Schoology's testing quiz system. It's a little bit of a roundabout way of doing things, but whatever works in this environment works. So let's say I want to take these questions, these answers, this multiple choice into Schoology. Here's what I did. Load up your favorite browser, and then you can search for Blackboard Quiz Generator. Uh, I've noticed that there are some dead links uh, when you do this. There are a lot of smaller colleges, ironically, offer this, but uh, they've come in and out of use. Uh, the site that I ended up using was this one, and I'll provide the link in the uh, text of the YouTube video here. Uh, this is Oklahoma Christian University. I have the link bookmark now. So what's nice about this, uh, you can type or paste your questions into the main text area and then generate test questions. The options are you can make multiple choice, multiple answer, true, false, essay question, fill in the blank. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do uh, both multiple choice and true, false. That's what I use for some of my lower level assessments. Um, there are some tips and tricks to do. Um, which I'll walk through. Avoid leaving blank rows, for example, unless you're going to a next question. Um, and then there's some ways that you tag your question answers. So again, I'll get into that here in a moment. So let me go back to my assessment and let me just copy a few of these. I'll just copy like the first five. Copy that and go back here. It is multiple choice. I'll put these in. And, uh, you know, the formatting is going to be a little bit weird. We'll fix that in a moment. It is far, far easier to do with this than it is to deal with putting in everything in Schoology, in my opinion. Uh, for the test name, you know, give it a name for whatever you're going to use. It doesn't honestly matter. It's just how it downloads the file. So if I do something like history quiz. So what I'll do is I will get rid of any extra blanks. And then it also requires the multiple choice options to be on the same vertical spacing so like that and then additionally you have to put in an asterisk before the correct answer so it knows which one to import correctly uh, so if i put a, an asterisk here go back to this and this Okay, so a little asterisk there. And the other thing I've noticed, uh, if you have questions that are on multiple lines, make sure they are not done with enter because then it confuses it. You have to do it on the same line. Even if it goes to the next line, just make sure that it's a space bar that goes and scrolls over, not an enter key. And you go through this, again, putting everything vertically putting on the correct answer and I you know I don't know why I'm taking the time to put the correct answer because it doesn't really matter to you guys what the correct answer is but you know some of us are type A like that is it type A I don't even know it doesn't matter ultimately primary functions military applications see you're learning a little bit history of computers good stuff and finally that okay so after you have your questions in, you have uh, the multiple choice letters with a period afterwards or a parenthesis. You have your questions numbered with a parenthesis or a period. That's one of the quirks of it. It says up there in the top, question must start with a period or parenthesis. Answer must start with a period or parenthesis. You have the asterisk before the correct answer. So what you do at this point is you hit generate test questions. If the computer accepts the information, it'll be green. If something's wrong, you can go back and edit it. Sometimes it doesn't play nicely with uh, certain like asterisks if they're in there. Uh, you know, most of you probably don't ever have that problem with computer science. I sometimes have to deal with some things like that. But all of mine were accepted. So now what I do is there's a download that comes up below that. 
you actually want to click on download question pool, not just the one on the left. You want to download the one on the right because it makes what's called a zip file. It's a compressed file of your information. So you download that in the lower left of your browser window. There it goes. So now I go into Schoology. And I go to any, you know, whichever course you're making this in. And I want to add a test or a quiz. So I'll give it a name, uh, video test quiz. Uh, let's say quizzes with 100 points, whatever. Hit create. So now to come up to the test quiz generator. And you're going to hit add question, but instead of doing true, false, mob choice, etc., you're going to go down to import. You're going to import from Blackboard, hit next, and then once you're here, it's going to ask you where the file is. Now, it doesn't do a great job of asking you. It's just this pop-up. There's a little icon on the left side, which when you highlight, it says file. So you hit file, and then you want to look in your download folder or wherever your browser downloads files. Some people have it set to the desktop. Some people have it set to the downloads folder. Go in there, and there should be the zip file of your questions. You hit open hit import and there are your questions if they came in correctly great if, if you want to double check them you don't trust it you are able to go over here to edits and there is your question there are your answers there is a correct answer that you put the asterisks in front of if you want to add on to randomize the choices you're able to but this is in my opinion so much faster than typing in every question every answer and it saves me a ton of time to make these things in our little hybrid world. You can also do um, true false questions. So if I go to, let's see, I need another assessment here with true false in it. It's really done pretty similarly. I open up this one. I think I have some true false in here. Uh, so here I have some true false. Let me just copy those. And then I'll go back to that website. So on the website, uh, if you clear the questions that you had, now I'm going to generate some true-false. Uh, if you want to choose a different name, what's going to happen is when you download that zip file, if it's the same name, uh, it will make a little one in front of your new copy so it doesn't overwrite your old one. So it's not like it's going to erase your old stuff. But if that's a big deal to you, you're welcome to change it. Uh, so I'm just going to keep it history quiz, and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to take off any of that extra stuff I have on here. Make sure that these are spaced correctly over on the side. And here, uh, because it's true-false, I can actually get rid of the true-false entirely because it's going to generate that for me. What I do instead is I put, after the question, I put in the word true or false uh, for the correct answer. So for this one, uh, this one is uh, false, period. And then this one is also false, period. So I have two true false. Uh, let me fix the space if there's only one in between. Again, I go to generate test questions. And if this comes up, it'll tell you. Um, I'm actually trying to figure out what's wrong with that. Why doesn't it like false? Do I not put a period there? I forget. Forgive me, this is my first time muddling through this as well. Okay, so I actually don't put a uh, period after the false. My apologies. Um, maybe I'll edit that out of the video, but not really. <laughs> Hopefully you're still watching. So once you're in here, then, uh, you know, again, generate test questions. They already are. They're green. So you download the two questions that you just created. There they are. And I will go now back to my Schoology. Do I have that page open still? No, I don't. So let me open that back up. And courses, if I go back there, and here's my existing quiz. All I need to do to add to my existing quiz is I just go add question and import. And for Blackboard, next, file. Here's my second file, open, import. And now I have two. Now, it does put them... Um, on top of the ones you already have. But what I typically do with my questions uh, in my settings, you can randomize the order of all of your questions. So it doesn't really matter what's in here. The other thing to take notice of, 
Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but back in here, I had my numbered 10 and 11. It doesn't care. Like, it takes off those numbers. It'll put them in the order of the numbers you have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I had uh, five questions here. It doesn't matter the order. It doesn't matter what number you put on. It'll do it for you. It's really nice. Uh, again, if you don't trust it, you can go into edit, and you can see true, false. It'll say false. It's the correct answer I put in there before. Um, you know, again, I'm just going to be straightforward. I just found this the other night. I'm not sure uh, how in everything works. Like, I haven't tried some of these other options, but I can't imagine it's uh, much different than what we already had here. So hopefully this will save you time. If you have any questions, let me know, and hopefully I can muddle through it with you. Thanks a lot.